Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of this uh, MTN API programming. Uh, our people were saying they could not understand the documentation very well. So I decided to create a video based on the training that we had uh, at the Innovation Village with MTN. And uh, these videos I think they will be of great help. Now, I thank all the people who have seen the video. But uh, there is a big challenge. People are requesting for uh, the continuation of the series, but they do not want to like or dislike. They do not want to comment. All they want to do is come and view, view, view. I'm not an employee of MTN. All I need is you to give me feedback that, hey, we are viewing, hey, the videos are nice, hey, change here. You comment, you share. You like or you dislike. You get it. But if you do not give me feedback, I'll think that you did not like the video and I'll simply not, not do anything good. Uh, I'll simply say maybe it was a wastage of time. Uh, so uh, thank you for requesting part two, but that's, that's one of the reasons why I've delayed to do part two. You get it? Because I simply wasn't getting the feedback that I required. So, you do one thing, you just like, share, you no know, comment, and then the video will get, uh, you know, it will get track, it will get statistics. And those statistics are what I'm looking for. Then how will other people find the video if you cannot, you see? How will this video differ from another uh, video in Nigeria where someone is also teaching the API, you know? How different are we? And that difference should be reflected in the views and the likes. I'm saying the views, but the likes are not there. And then I can't, I cannot go up in the Google stats. All right, so with that said, let's continue. So today, uh, when we go to the documentation, um, uh, first of all, uh, I, I need to make sure that my testing is okay because we need these numbers. Okay, that will be in part three. And then, I'm going to go, uh, the other time we, uh, we created a user in part one, we managed to create a user and then we created the, we found out that our user was created and then we created the, the API key, okay? Okay, so remember this, uh, when you're requesting from the server, uh, you're posting, uh, when, you're, when you're taking to the server, you're posting, when you're requesting from the server, you're getting. And then the other thing, don't forget that you are the communication medium to the customers through which MTN goes through, goes to. So it is you that MTN knows. So the customers go through you. Therefore, some of the things like the API key should be kept very, very, when you're programming, very, very, you know, secure. Otherwise, if someone accesses that, then it means they can access your customer's accounts. Okay, and then this, what we are provided here is for only the sandbox testing. Otherwise, when you go for production, you'll be provided with other credentials, but the steps are the same. The steps of programming are the same. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, we on collection. We on collection. And then, when a user is requesting to pay something using your application, it will send a message to their phone requesting them to input. Okay? But that request requires a token that will communicate with the server that the user is going through your application. And your application, remember, it's you that empty nodes. And then the user is going through you. So there must be a token, like a security protocol, uh, referencing you to the server or to the sandbox for the moment with that token that is going to last for a particular time through which you are going to transact. So the first thing we're going to do is create that token. So let's go to token. So we are posting, we are supposed to post to the sandbox to get the token. All right, so they are telling us here that this operation is used to create an access token which can be used to authorize and authenticate towards the other endpoint of the API. 
Alright? So, let us see. This is what we're supposed to follow. So, we're supposed to request to this link. Okay? And then, what do we need? In our header, we need an authorization. The authorization should be a basic authentication header of the API user and the user, okay? That is the API user ID and the API key. And it should be sent in base 64. So these are the two things that we're going to look at today. First, we need to have a basic authentication. Okay, a basic authentication. That's what we're going to first achieve. And then we decode it, we encode it in base 64. And then the, after, that is how we're going to get our key. All right, our token. This is what we're going to get. How we're going to get our token. And then the next thing they need is they need our subscription key. And then these are the responses we need. We need to, if we get a 200, it means it's okay. Okay, and then this is. The, the other present the response we shall get we shall if it's okay then we are bound to get an access token in a string and then the token type and then what time it expires and then if we get a 401 uh, it means it is unauthorized therefore it may it may not belong to that particular user key okay and then for example, you, the user, someone might have put in a wrong key. So you will get an error on the string. And then if it's a server error, this is what you'll get. It will be a 500. So the first thing we're going to do is create the author basic authorization. How do you do that? For that, you need to have your uh, local, local server running. Okay. So I'm using a map in my case. And then... Um, I'm also going to use Sublime Text. So, we're going to go to PHP. Now, I don't know those of Java, what uh, the way they do it. Uh, but with time, I'll include the Java side. But let me use the easiest. So, we're going to go to PHP. And then this is what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is provide the username. So, I'm putting the username into a, vari a variable. And then, provide the password. I'm putting the password also into a variable. And then... I'm creating a variable, which variable is called auth, and it is going to carry the username, and then I put, I concatenate, uh, so period, I concatenate a double colon, and then I also concatenate the password, okay? And then I get those, oh, and I get those, okay? So the variable auth, I put it into a variable credentials with a base 64 encode. Just type it like this. It's it's a uh, it's it, it it's a default function. It ships with PHP base 64 encoding. So I get the variable auth and base encode it, base 64 encode it, and then equate it to a variable credentials. Okay. Then after I echo a variable credentials and this is what we're going to do so i'm going to come to my uh, map here in the local host so this file is called learning.php okay so i load learning.php and this is what you'll get and this never changes it will be belonging to your user id okay and your key so this is what the sandbox has sent no, this is what has been encoded in base 64. So we copy this, okay? And then we come to the sandbox. First, um, I said first, we are using the sandbox. First, we are using the sandbox. Then we shall see how do we deal with the same kind of... Um, with, with the same kind of um, variables in... in, in um, with this, how can we achieve the same using Postman? And then I'll come and then I show you how to do that with PHP. Uh, maybe that part with PHP, you may buy it at a small cost uh, via my website on MTN, okay, uh, paying through MTN. Or those of you who are outside uh, Uganda, you'll be paying through PayPal. But um, uh, we're going to go through all that. So, 
right here all i have to do is type they said here in the documentation that it should be a basic authent authentication so all i have to do here is type basic and then i paste what what has been given us here you know as an echo after the other um, uh, after this echoing of the credentials okay so i'm going to paste that so command v here so and then i have my subscription key okay and then all i have to do is is now sending a request and then i'll i'll, I'll have the response so i'm going to send okay and this is the response the response is 200 which means it's okay as given to us here in the documentation so the response 200 and then we need to find an access token which has been provided and then what time what kind and then when it expires okay so this is the access token and then the kind is a uh, token type is access and then it will be expiring this time so i'm going to copy this okay this is my access token and then i come here okay and then i go okay and make a request to pay i go and make a request to pay all right so this is where we're going to be following in part three how to how do we make a request to pay do not forget to subscribe like or share this video do not forget to subscribe like or share this video all right